Barakat Yahweh, Barakat Yahweh Shai, Kol Halayim La Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Barakah Kodash, which means all praises to uh, Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father. Bahasham means in the name Yahweh Shai is the name of His only begotten Son, who the world only calls Jesus Christ. Barakah Kodash means in the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, only way to worship the Father and the Son. Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace, blessing, salutation to so all you brothers preaching the gospel and truth and in sincerity, always in charity. And um, you can see the the title of this lesson. It's inspired uh, um, from uh, Apostle Ram Lob's lesson he did earlier on, on Romans, the 14th chapter. You know, without further ado, we just hop right into it. This is Romans 14 and 12. It says, so then every one of us, right, us brothers within this faith, us brothers that's uh, presenting our bodies as a living sacrifice, right? So then every one of us shall give account of himself to the Most High, because Apostle Ramla made a statement within his video. He said, what, that day? We can't vouch for each other, man. You know, each one of us uh, 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 pretty much has to vouch for ourselves, man. And ultimately, Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai has to vouch for us, you know? So I'm going to read this again, Romans 14 and 12. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to the Most High, you know? And what is that saying? This is 2 Corinthians Five and ten. It says, "For we must all appear, every last one of us, man, right before the judgment seat of Yahweh Shai, that everyone may receive the things done in his body, according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad." So every last one of us is going to uh, 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 stand in, uh, for that judgment, man. Every last one of us, you know. And when you go into this, he was a uh, uh, Paul. Matter of fact, let me start at one. It's Second Corinthians five and one. It says, "For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of the heavenly Father, and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens." So he talking about what if this body was to die, that we have a body in the heavens, right? For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. That's what he wrote about in Romans the eighth chapter. You know, the redemption of our body. You know, all the creation groaneth men, even us. You know, waiting for what the manifestation of the sons of the heavenly Father. This verse three, if so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked for in that for Salaki, for we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that we should be unclothed, but clothed upon that mortality might be swallowed up of life so that we might be covered. You know, because as he said, what if so be that clothed, we shall not be found naked, man. So we could be found blameless. Right. For, for we that are in this tabernacle do groan in this flesh, groan, being burdened, not for that we should be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up of life, you know, so that immortal body, man, that's what we're hoping for. Verse five, now he that hath wrought us for the selfsame thing is the heavenly father, who also hath given unto us the earnest of the spirit. Therefore, we are always confident, right, with faith, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are in the flesh, we are absent from the Lord. Yeah, because the Lord is in the heavens, right? For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Like Paul wrote about, I'm in the straight between the two. I don't know which one to choose. So it says we are, we are willing rather to be absent from the body and to be in the heavens with the Lord. Right? Verse 9, though. Wherefore, we labor. That whether present or absent, whether we here on the earth or whether we in the heavens, we may be accepted of him. That's the confidence that we have. So the work that we're putting in here on earth. We have the confidence that, look, even if we're not here on earth, but the works we did on earth would translate, man. As it says, the works follow them uh, in, in the book of Revelation. Uh, a, a, a shalom, elder. Um, uh, it said they works follow them. Let me find this real quick. I'm not sure if that's how it's properly quoted. Works following. Yep. Revelation 14 and 13. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the spirit that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. So that confidence that Paul was speaking of was, look, that hey, hey, hey. that's why he said, I have ran a, 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 ran my course. I have fought a good fight. Henceforth, there is a crown laid up for me because he had the confidence that the works that he put in his flesh. 
So when he was put to death, he had that confidence that he would be accepted, man. So it's the same thing with us here. Apostle uh, uh, Tahar, hey, hey, through the spirit, man, is hopping on what? Brothers being active, man. Not being lukewarm. Not being slothful. Not being sluggish. Because ultimately, this is helpful for uh, 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 each and every last one of our salvation. Why? Because each one of us has to give an account, man. It ain't like Apostle Tahar or, or any of the apostles is, is, is getting any type of uh, uh, um, um, gratification or any type of profit out of us doing these lessons, man. These things is helpful for us. You see, and Lord willing, this lesson is going to show that. So it says, 2 Corinthians 5 and 8, we are confident, I say, and rather and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore, we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Yahweh Shai, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. So we're letting you know that hey, hey, a judgment is coming, man, for everybody, man. That's why we must do what's right in the sight of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai. But we are made manifest unto the Heavenly Father, and our trust also are made manifest in your conscience. So from there, let's go to Philippians 2 and 12. That's why Paul wrote this. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. You see? And that's what it's about, man. What are you doing when nobody is around? Hey, because the eyes of the Lord is always upon us, man. That's for the, the brothers that really believe. Because if you don't believe, you don't, you, know, you don't fear the Lord. You know, when you're around the brothers, you're going to be here. here, here so long, man. All that. But as soon as you buy your goddamn self, man, you're doing all kind of manner of bullshit, man. That's a guy that ultimately don't fear the Lord, but the brothers who truly fear the Lord knows that, hey, the angels is always there watching us, man. Hey, it speaks about a bird of the air with go tell the matter, man. Hey, the angels are, 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 <laughs> are six, nine and everything, man. You know, that's the new uh, word now, six, nine for snitching, you know, but hey, hey, the, 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 hey, the angels is telling everything, all your thoughts, all your actions, everything is being recorded. That's why it's the utmost importance that what, man, we renew our mind. That we renew our spirit, like it says in Romans, uh, the 12th chapter, man. Let's grab that. And in and, and, and praying, fasting, applying our, our, our mind to the words, meditation on Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah, this is what's going to uh, uh, allow the Lord to, uh, to mold us into a vessel that he can use, man. You know, this is Romans 12 and 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of the Heavenly Father, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto the Most High, which, are, which is your reasonable service. And that's key right there, which is our reasonable service. This is the whole duty of man. This is why we put here on this earth. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, the washing of the word, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of the Most High, man, so that we may know what's pleasing unto our Father. From there, let's go to Ezekiel 14 and 14. It says, those, these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it. They should deliver but their own souls by their righteousness, saith the Lord power. So just hopping on the, uh, what Apostle uh, uh, Ramla spoke. Hey, no man can, hey, you're not going to get saved by the next man's works. You're not going to be saved by the next man's faith or the next man's righteousness, man. Just because you in a, a, a great millstone camp, that ain't guaranteed for your ass salvation. You got to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. That's why it says in Second Andrew, the seventh chapter, it said what? That, 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 that straight gate, that narrow path was so small that only one man can go there at once, man. That's what lines up to this next verse. Next verse, this next uh, 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 scripture. This is Galatians 6 and 4. But let every man prove his own work, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. Why? Because you did the studying. You went back and, and, and checked out uh, 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 if the scripture said so, if that word meant that. Not just hanging on every word that a brother says, an apostle said, an apostle said it, it must be true. No, nah, man. Be the church of Berea. Go back and search those things out, man. Go back and do the research so you can prove it for your own self, man. The scripture says in Proverbs, the 15th chapter, that a righteous man study it to answer. That's what the Lord desires, man. It was counted to Abraham for righteousness. What? His faith, man, that he believed the Lord, man. 
And that's what it's about. So when we hear the apostles or the brothers speak and they say something, we go back to the word. We go back to the Bible because our faith is within this, man. That's what's going to be counted for our righteousness, man. It's our faith in Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai and the record that was left, man. But let every man prove his own work and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. For every man shall bear his own burden, man. You got to take up your cross. You got to go through the uh, uh, through the straight gate. Through much tribulation shall we enter into the kingdom. Another brother can't uh, uh, um, um, suffer the things that you got to suffer. What you got to get uh, corrected within you, you know. But from there, let's go to 2 Peter 1 and 10. It says, wherefore the rather brethren give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fall, man. So each one of us got to show that commitment, that diligence. We got to put forth the energy and the effort in serving Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah. Each one of us, because the next man is not going to do it for you. The next man can't get you saved. In 1 Timothy, the fourth chapter, it says, What? Continue in these things, because in doing so, thou shalt save thyself and them that hear thee. The only way that those brothers can be saved, those that hearing us can be saved, is if they're applying the things that we're saying and going back and checking it. Because our faith stand, matter of fact, this was later on, but let's just get it. This is uh, uh, Jeremiah 17 and 5. It says, Thus saith Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man and maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departed from the Lord. Exactly, man. You trust him because oh, uh, this man got a, a, a title. Because this man is called general or elder or, or apostle. You trusting in that and not trusting in the uh, the uh, the words of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai, man. So if you trusting in man, that means you departed from the Lord. And it says, "Curse be that man." Verse six: For he shall be like the heath in the desert, and shall not see when good cometh, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness in a salt land and not inhabit it, man. He gonna be dry than a hoe, a withered up tree like the like that fig tree, man. You see. That Yahweh shall cursed. Verse 17. Blessed is the man that trusted in Yahweh and whose hope Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai is, man. And that's what it's about. We believe that the apostles and elders are the men of the Lord because the Bible prophesied of these men, man. The Lord said he would give us pastors according to his heart. The Lord said he would send us shepherds that would not leave us lacking. The Lord said that our teachers shall not be removed into a corner anymore. You see, so our faith lies in the word that the Lord sent these men here on the earth to guide us in the proper way. So our trust is in Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai. It's in the word, man. Do you believe that? Do you believe that the spirit is, is speaking through the men that we're following? Starting with Apostle Tahar on down. Because if you believe that, man, hey, well, the orders that come down, the three videos a week, you applying yourself to the knowledge, man. And you will be trying your utmost to perform these things, man. Because it's not that man that's saying it. It's the Holy Spirit that's speaking within him. And it's not for that man's profit. It's for our own profit, man. These lessons benefit us. He that watereth, watereth also himself. So the more you dive down in, in the spirit, the more the Lord is using and increasing you as well. We're building up our spiritual bank account. <laughs> you know, this is all, all to each individual salvation, man. Verse eight, for he shall be as a tree planted by the waters and that spread it out her roots by the river and shall not see when heat cometh, but her leaf shall be green and shall not be careful in the year of drought. Neither shall cease from yielding fruit, man. And that's when your faith lies in Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shah, that you trust that the Lord is doing these things. Let's go back to Philippians. Philippians 2 and 13, for it is Yahweh. Bahasham Yahweh Shah, which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. So it's all the Lord that's using us, man. So we got to pray that the Lord take not his Holy Spirit from us, that he continue to allow us to be what those profitable servants, man. That we may uh, continue to be those vessels that's meet for the master's use. You see? So from there, let's go to Proverbs 4 and 23. It says, keep thy heart with all diligence. For out of it are the issues of life. It says, keep thy heart. Each man got to keep, you got to keep your own mind, man. You got to pray to the Lord. You got to bridle your own thoughts, your own lust. You got to bridle your flesh. The next man can't do that. 
You got to keep your heart with all diligence because what for out of it are the issues of life, man. We're going to be judged according to what our thoughts, according to our words, what do you say through the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaking. And those words turn into actions, man. From there, let's go to Second Corinthians 13 and five. That's why this is written. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves, man. Know ye not your own selves? How that Yahweh Shah Hamashiach is in you, except ye be reprobates, man, except ye be void of judgment. You should know that Yahweh Shah is dwelling within us, man. I can do all things through Yahweh Shah that strengtheneth me. So if you believe that you can perform these things, man, because it's Yahweh Shah that's working within us, you know? So that's why we got to what? Prove our own selves, man. Continually examine ourselves. Are we living up to the standard? Measuring ourselves what? According to the measuring stick, which is the scriptures, man. This is what it's about, man. From there, let's go to Sirach 27 and 3. Let's start at 3 since it's right there. It says, unless a man hold himself dis diligently in the fear of the Lord, his house shall soon be overthrown, man. So we got to hold ourselves diligently in this word. As when one sifteth with the seed, the refuge remaineth, so the filth of man is in his talk. Through the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Verse 5, the furnace proveth the potter's vessels, so the trial of man is in his reasoning. And that's why the scripture says this, if I could find it. Um, So Rock 14 and 20. Blessed is the man that doeth meditate good things in wisdom. What? That's the fear of the Lord. Proverbs uh, uh, 1 and uh, uh, 7, if I'm not mistaken, right? And that reasoneth of holy things by his understanding, man. So that's what it says, what? That the trial of man is in his reasoning. Are your reasonings according to the Holy Spirit? Is your reasonings according to the word? That's why it says, let's, let's go back. Let's go back. Let's, let's let's jump to uh Romans 2. Shalom on all you brothers on the comment board. Let's go back to Romans 2 and 28. It says, For he is not a Jew, he is not an Israelite, which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew, he is an Israelite, which is one inwardly. This is the Israel of God, man. This is whom the Lord is seeking for. And circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit and not in the letter whose praise is not of men, but of Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shah, seeking to do what's pleasing unto the Lord, man. Whether I'm standing in front of a brother or whether I'm by myself. Back to Sirach 27 and 5. The furnace proveth the potter's vessel, so the trial of man is in his reasoning. The fruit declare if the tree have been dressed. So is the utterance of a conceit in the heart of man. You see? So the fruit declared if a tree has been dressed. You can tell if the garden is being kept. You can tell if somebody has been taking care of their lawn, if they've been taking care of their garden, their vineyard. You can tell, like, damn, he's been taking good care of that. Was well, the same thing as what? A utterance of a conceit in the heart of man. That's why Sirach says what? That a wise man. Let's, let, let, let's get that. Let's get that. I want to say it's a rock 21, but uh, uh yeah, maybe that's the spirit. It's a rock 21 and 26. The heart of fools is in their mouth, meaning what a fool speaks whatever's on his mind, but the mouth of the wise is in their hearts, man. Meaning what you reason, you consider the things that you're speaking that you're about to say, you see. And that, that's taking diligent care of, uh, of what? That's the fear of the Lord, man. That's why I says the tree, uh, 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 the fruit declared if the tree have been dressed. 
The Israelite is one inwardly, man. Hey, you think it, what, what? It says what? That this word shall be as frontlets between thy eyes, man. These are spiritual glasses that we see through in every, in any situation, you know? But uh, from there, let's move on. This is 1 Kings 8 and 39. This is uh, King Solomon's prayer, right? Matter of fact, let's start up. Uh, 38. What prayer and supplication soever he, Salakia, what prayer and suppl supplication soever be made by any man or by all thy people Israel, which shall know every man the plague of his own heart and spread forth his hands toward this house, then hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place and forgive and do and give to every man according to his ways. That's the key point. Whose heart thou knowest, for thou, even thou only, knowest the hearts of all the children of men. So the Lord knows each and every last one of our hearts, man. So the Lord knows if we're truly sincere, if we're truly uh, uh, seeking to please him. You know, that's why we must pray unto Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai, man. You know, but let's go back to Sarah. It says, above all this, pray. Let me get that. So rock 37 and 15. And above all this, pray to the most high that he will direct thy way in truth, man. So we got to ask the Lord, man. You know, it's my King David in Psalms 139. He said what? Matter of fact, let's grab that. And this is this is a heavy prayer right here, too, man. This is uh Psalms 139 and 23. Search me, O power, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. He's asking the Lord to try him, man. That's heavy. And see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way of everlasting. So King David prayed and said, Lord, search me, try me. Try my heart, man. Put me in different situations and see if there be any wicked way in me, man. And lead me in the way of righteousness. You know? That's a heavy, heavy prayer right here, man. And that's why we got to pray to ask the Lord what, what to purge out the slothfulness, to purge out the lukewarmness, to purge out whatever, whatever, whatever uh, wickedness that may be within us, man. We got to ask and cry out to the Lord to get rid of that, man, that we can uh, uh, be whole and perfect in his sight, man, to the best of our ability. You know. From there, let's go to uh, this first Samuel 16 and seven. It says, but Yahweh said unto Samuel, look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature. Because I have refused him, for Yahweh seeth not as man seeth, for man looketh on the outward appearance, but Yahweh Basham Yahushai looketh on the heart. So the Lord is checking every last one of us, man. He said, What, man? I, I, I will search Jerusalem with candles. You know, it said, What? That the spirit of man is, is, is the candle of the Lord, searching the inward thoughts in the book of Proverbs, roughly paraphrasing that scripture, you know. But anyway, let's go back to Jeremiah 17 and let's read verse 10. It says, I, Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings, man. So we're all going to stand before the judgment seat. We got to give account for the things that we've done in this flesh, man, whether good or bad. So we hoping that what, man? Hey, 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 that, that, that the good, hey, it says what? That, uh, 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 uh make that, let, let, let's get that. Ain't nobody perfect on this earth, man. We're here in this body of death, but this is what the scripture says. Sirach 17 and 25. Return unto the Lord and forsake thy sins. Make thy prayer before his face and offend less. That's all we can do, man. That's all we can do. Are you mortifying your members? Are you uh, 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 denying the lust of your of, of your flesh, of your body? You see? Now, we going to fuck up. A just man falls seven times, but he picketh himself up again. But the point is, is that the good should outweigh the bad, man. We know that that's why Yahweh Shah died for us. So we believe that as long as we're doing what he told us, we're going to be covered by his blood. 
So we ain't got to worry about that, man. It says, let not your sins weigh you down and let not your iniquities build up themselves. Matter of fact, let's grab that too. Second measures. What is seventy six? This is uh, let's start at seventy five. This is second measure sixteen and seventy five. Be ye not afraid, neither dot, for the Most High is your God. And the guide of them who keep my commandments and precepts, saith the Lord power. That's the confidence that Paul wrote about in 2 Corinthians 5. Let not your sins weigh you down, and let not your iniquities lift up themselves, man. So we're striving to do what's right in the eyes of Yahweh Basham Yahweh So let's go back. Sirach 17 and 25. Return unto the Lord and forsake thy sins. Make thy prayer before his face and offend less. Turn again to the Most High and turn away from iniquity, for he will lead thee out of darkness into the light of health and hate thou abomination vehemently. And that's what it's about, man, the renewal of our mind. So from there, let's go to, did we just read? Yep, yep, we read that. We read Samuel. This is Jeremiah 32 and 19. It says, great in counsel and mighty in work. Let's uh, just talk about the Lord. This is Jeremiah 32 and 18. Thou showest loving kindness unto thousands and recompenses the iniquity of the fathers into the bosom of their children after them. The great, the mighty power, Yahweh Basham Yahweh Lord of hosts, is his name. Great in counsel and mighty in work, for thy eyes are open upon all the ways of the son of men. Lord, aid it. nothing is hid from him as it is written to give everyone according to his ways and according to the fruit of his hand doings man so why would you be mad off doing three videos a week that should abound to what to to uh uh, uh to your uh, uh salvation man to your uh, uh 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 spiritual bank account you know from there let's go to psalm 62 and 12 it says also unto thee o lord belongeth mercy for thou renderest to every man according to his work so a uh, uh, so what i that's plain. Matthew 16 and 27. For the son of man shall come in the glory of his father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. I don't need no explanation. Galatians 6 and 8. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well doing. What's that? This work. For in due season, we shall reap if we faint not, man, as we have therefore opportunity. While while is day, let us work the work. Let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith, man. And that's just plain. Second Corinthians nine and six. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully and that's what that's, that's through the holy spirit that's what apostle Ha is provoking man provoking unto works provoking unto good works man so that brothers can 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 sow bountifully in order for us to reap bountifully man verse seven every man according as he purposes in his heart so let him give not grudgingly or of necessity for the most high loveth a cheerful giver man be willing to do this man Hey, in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, matter of fact, let's get that. This is the reason why the, uh, 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 the one of the many reasons why the curses, uh, the Lord put the curses on us. This is Deuteronomy 28. And 47, because thou servest not the Lord thy power with joyfulness and with gladness of heart. For the abundance of all things, man. Hey, Jake looked at this as a grievance, man. This is an honor. This is a privilege. The water, Yahweh, Basham, Yahweh, Shai. It says, because thou servest not the Lord thy power with joyfulness and with gladness of heart. 
for the abundance of all things, man. Therefore shalt thou serve thy enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and thirst and nakedness and in want, meaning in lack of all things, you know, and he shall put a, a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. So we got to serve the Lord, Lord with joyfulness of heart, man. You know, as it says, what a, a being a cheerful giver, man, be cheerful to do this work, man. Not only is the Lord uh, working through us, he's using us, man, which is an honor. But also, man, hey, you, you don't know what brother can be getting built up, what brother can be getting encouraged, what brother can be getting exhorted off the lesson, man. You hear about brother, hey, brother, come and be like, hey, brother, that lesson you did, man, hey, hey, brother, it pulled me out, you know. Man, that's uplifting in the spirit to hear that, man. So why do you how about Shami that, 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 that we are being able to be used as vessels, man. And it's written in Isaiah 58, man. This is it. This is Isaiah 58. I'm going to get straight to the point. No, this is the spirit. This is uh, Isaiah 58, 9. It says, verse 7, is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry? And that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house. And this is what? This is loving thy neighbor as thyself, man, doing this work. When thou seest the naked, that thou cover him, and that thou hide not thyself from thy own flesh, from your own people, man. You sitting on your ass while, while you know, so you sitting there cool with the state of your people. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thy health shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah shall be thy reward. Then shalt thou call, and the Lord shall answer. Thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here I am. If thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke, the putting forth of the finger, and speaking vanity. Yeah, man. Your own desires, your own flesh, cast that off. It says, Cast off the burdens of man. You know, it says, Put aside the sin which is do us so easily beset us, and let us run with patience this race that's set before us. Roughly paraphrasing the scripture. It says, in speaking vanity, let us speak wholesome words, man. Let our mind be sober that we may speak what? These, these, these words of health, you know? Verse 10, if thou draw out thy soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall thy light rise in obscurity and thy darkness be as the noonday. And the Lord shall guide thee continually and satisfy thy soul and drop and make fat thy bones. And thou shalt be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters fail not. That's that Jeremiah 17 we read, right? This is the point. And they and they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations and thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach, the restore of paths to dwell in, man. The brothers that's out on the highways and hedges, the brothers that's putting out these lessons, man. This, this is what you're going to be called, man. That, that praise and fame that you're going to have in the kingdom of heaven. Who the repair of the breach, man. We are partaking in the building of the, the rebuilding of the tabernacles of David, man. That's not a light thing, dog. So from there, man, let's uh let's get Romans. We're gonna end it on this. This is Romans 2 and 1. Therefore, thou art excusable. Oh, man, all of us, man, are excusable, inexcusable, inexcusable, Salakia. Oh, man, whosoever thou art that judges, for when thou judges another, thou condemnest thyself. For thou that judges doest the same things. We out here telling the people, hey, hey, not to be doing, not, not to be eating swine, not to be committing adultery, not to be, you know, uh, 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 sinning against the Lord, so forth and so on, man. But yet, when we buy ourselves, we're doing those same things. But we are sure that the judgment of the Most High is according to truth against them which commit such things. And thinkest thou this, O man, that, that judges them which do such things and do us the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of the Heavenly Father? Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of the Most High leadeth thee to repentance? But after thy hardness and impotent heart treacherous up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of the Most High. And this is the point. That's why we read all that. 
who will render to every man according to his deeds. To them who be patient, it's like it, to them who by patient continuance and well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. But unto them that are contentious, I gotta do three videos, man, man. and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath, tribulation, and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil, of the Jew first and also of the Gentile, meaning what? Of them who knew who they were and also to the Israelites that didn't. But glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good, to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. For there is no respect of persons with the Most High, man. And, and, and that's it. That's all, you know. So, Lord willing, I hope that was edifying. Hey, the brother put on the comment board, Daniel 12 and 3. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever, man. When Moses came down that mountain, he had to put a veil on his face because because his, his face was shining so bright, man. Ain't the kingdom of heaven, man, though, hey, hey, those, those, those chosen men are going to have that glow, that shine to them, man. It's going to be glorious, man. The moral of the story is the glory that's, that's, that, that, that's coming from Yahweh by Sham Yahweh Shai, man. So, man, like I said, man, Lord willing, I was edifying. You know, I hope it was exhorting, encouraging. You know, I give all praises, honor, glory to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Rachaha Kodash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to all you brothers preaching the gospel in truth and in sincerity, always in charity, you know, who's rightly dividing the word of truth directly and correctly. Peace, blessings, salutations to you brothers, you fuses that may be watching Israel. Shalom, man. Stay strong. Let's continue to push. You know what I'm talking about? Let's continue to push. Shalom.